Well, greetings. My name is Peter Hay, and I'm standing in the sanctuary of the United Methodist Congregation that gathers in Wilmington, Massachusetts. And I bid you welcome for this weekend worship video and on this All Saints Day, we gather for worship. I invite us now to give our attention to one of our lay leaders, Denise, as she calls us to worship and to a mindfulness of God's presence. Won't you join me for the call to worship? A thousand days are but a moment to God. All flesh is grass and withers away. Still we treasure our days with those whom we love and reluctantly give them back to God. On this day, we thank God for the saints in our lives. Let us worship God. Please join me now for the opening hymn. And our opening prayer will be read responsively. In the beginning, God called the world into being, saying, Let there be light. In the fullness of time, Jesus came from God to us, saying, I am the light of the world. In our everyday life, we see the work of the saints, the ones in whom God's light shines. So let us give thanks for the saints this day, and let us worship God. We gather this morning to remember our call, to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. We bring with us the events of the week in the world and in our lives, trying to know how to be just and loving and humble in the midst of it all. We gather here and see those who are doing justice, who are kind beyond measure, who set the example for humility with gratitude for living saints, with thankfulness for the purpose of faith, let us worship God. And our scripture lesson is from the book Deuteronomy, chapter 12, verses five and six. But you shall seek the place that the Lord your God will choose out of all your tribes as his habitation to put his name there. You shall go there bringing there your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes and your donations, your votive gifts, your freewill offerings, and the firstlings of your herds and flocks. Let us hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And this brings us to our time and our service for our young people and each of us, the young at heart. So I have uh, spent a little time uh, earlier today doing some research, some very important facts, but I've got some things, kind of a, a did you know, a fun fact. So here are a couple things that I learned today. Did you know that in the original 1902 stage version of a movie that hopefully our kiddos have seen, and I am assuming our adults have seen, in the original stage version of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Dorothy did not have a dog named Toto. Do you know what it was? She had a faithful companion that was a cow named Imogene. It's hard to imagine. I did not know that until I researched that and learned that today. Another one that I learned. Did you know that for the first four decades in the early 1900s of the Olympic Games, you know, now we have the Summer Olympics, and then two years later the Winter Olympics, and it's Athletes from all over the world come to compete, but for the first four decades, there alongside athletics were included uh, some art competitions. Medals were awarded for sculpture and for music and for painting and for architecture. 
However, after the 1948 Olympics, uh, the arts contingent was scrapped and they decided that those, those medals no longer counted. They were kind of discredited. But one of the final sculpture medals ever won at the Olympics was by a man named John Copley from Britain. And at 73 years old, if those medals still counted, he would be by far the oldest medalist in Olympic history. And my last fun fact for you, did you know, this one's in the theme of uh, Halloween, I guess, did you know that there have been 300, more than 300, limited edition, seasonal and regional flavors of the Kit Kat candy bar produced in Japan since the year 2000? I looked through a list and some of the uh, most eye-raising flavors I saw were cantaloupe, uh, roasted corn, soy sauce, and baked potato. So hopefully none of you got any baked potato candy in your uh, trick-or-treat basket this year. But I mentioned these fun facts because these are some things that I did not know. I'm guessing some of you out there may have known some of them, but hopefully you learned something new. And that's a way to say that we are always learning new things all through life. Usually, hopefully, things more important than uh, the number of limited edition, limited edition Kit Kat flavors in Japan in the last 20 years. Um, but this weekend in church, we're celebrating a special occasion at church that we celebrate each year, the Sunday after uh, Halloween called All Saints Day. And it is a day that we remember all the people that have come before us and all that they've taught us that we can learn from those older than us, whether we are two years old or 92 years old. We know that we're still learning. And on this day, we remember here in our own church and those saints around the world, the people that came before us that lived godly lives, that taught lessons. Maybe they were our Sunday school teacher. Maybe they were just someone that would greet us with a smile. I still remember someone when I was young who every Sunday I'd show up. His name was Don, and he would greet me and give me a Tootsie Roll. That's left an impression on me. He's one of the saints that I think of, someone that I learned something from, and so many others. And so I hope, as you receive this, that you would think back on some of the lessons that we've learned from people in our community and maybe people that are no longer with us in this community. Would you join me in prayer? Dear God, we thank you for the many saints that have come to, to teach us, to show us how to live godly lives. And we pray that we would that they would not be forgotten, but that we would always seek to live lives that show those lessons in the way that we care for others and the way we give generously and the way we live lives of love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Step by step with Forever We Will Sing. God, you are my God. God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning, and I will learn to walk in your ways. And step by step you'll lead me, and I will follow you all of my days. And I will follow you all of my days. Hallelujah. We honor you, Lord Jesus, and forever we will sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, most All Saints Day. My mind goes to Kathy's parents. They were wonderful people who uh, were deeply, deeply committed to the Christian way of life. Kathy's father was an Episcopal, a priest in the Episcopal Church. And uh, I just admired, admired them and was so blessed by knowing them in my life. Uh, uh, my own parents were... Uh, a little secretive about money. 
You see, uh, my dad, t my, my mom didn't manage money really well, so we always felt kind of poor. We really weren't, but felt that way. And my dad was very secretive about his money. And uh, after they got divorced, he became all the more secretive for fear that uh, little pictures would uh, reveal things. So didn't get a lot of financial training. But Kathy's parents were amazing. Not only did they practice the Christian discipline of tithing, but they taught their daughter to practice the Christian discipline of tithing as well. And Kathy's the one who taught me. I'll tell you a little story of, the, of how this all began for us. We'd worked at summer camp, Wanakee United Methodist Center, right after we were married. And uh, uh, in the fall, uh, I went back for my senior year of college, and we had an apartment together. And it was Saturday night, and we were getting ready for church, and Kathy just sort of began to talk rather nonchalantly. She said, now, the church is going to pay you $45 a week to be the youth minister, right? And I said, yes, that's, that's the plan. And she said, well, it, and I made $130, including tips, at the coffee shop where she was working. And I said, yeah, you did well. So then she continued, so uh, that's $175, right? Yes. And then she said, so our tithe will be $17.50. <laughs> and I, I kind of swallowed hard. <laughs> I was in my last year of college planning to go on to graduate school. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of money. But I didn't object. And ever since that day, we've lived with the discipline of tithing giving 10% of what we get, and we will do that for the rest of our lives. Now, I know some people don't like it when the preacher talks about money in church, um, but Jesus would not be one of those people who doesn't like to talk about money. We have 38 stories in the New Testament that we believe Jesus is remembered for having told, and uh, that accounts for the repetitions. And of those 38 stories in the New Testament, 16 of them are about our money and the use of our possessions. So 42% of the stories that Jesus told are about our money. Deuteronomy, talks about tithes, votive offerings, and free will offerings. And uh, so shall I. A tithe seems to be the expectation from the Older Testament. And some have taken that as a very rigid law. I tend to accept it as guidance and I have been blessed through my lifetime by practicing tithing. But I don't see it as a strict or as a demanding commandment. I was so fortunate very early in my life with one of my mentors. He gave me this advice. He said, Peter, save 10% of everything you make Give 10% of everything you make and be careful with the 80%. I see the teaching around tithing really as an invitation for us to challenge ourselves to give proportionately. That is, our contribu my contributions should reflect the resources that I have, it should also be in proportion to my commitment to the ministry and to the life of the church and my gifts should be proportional to the gratitude that fills my heart because of the goodness 
and the grace of God. I also see the teaching of tithing as a challenge for us to be planned and disciplined in the way that we give. You know, if we just give what's ever left over, we probably won't have very much left over. But if we plan, if we are steady and consistent, we can accomplish a whole lot more. I know very few people who can go out and buy a house Usually, when you buy a home, you get a mortgage and you, and you pay a regular amount each and every month. If we approach our generosity in that way, we might do better. The invitation to tithe is an invitation to give the amount that's right for you and to give that gift on a regular pattern in a way that works. Now some giving is not disciplined. Some giving is rather spontaneous. And we have those two other categories described in Deuteronomy. A votive offering, according to uh, scholars of the Older Testament, a votive offering was a spontaneous gift given as a part of a vow or a promise. Have you ever prayed, Oh God, if you get me out of this circumstance, I promise I will? If we approach that as if we're manipulating God, as if we're cajoling God to do for us what we want done, we've missed the mark. You see, God loves us, and God doesn't love us more when we're faithful, and God doesn't love us less when we are not. But it's simply a response to a promise or to a gift. Let me share with you a story that Brian Bachnight tells from his ministry. There was a family that had two children, and they moved into a new community, and shortly after they moved to that community, they began attending the local church. They joined, they made friends, and then, unfortunately, a tragedy struck. They were in an automobile accident, the parents and the older child came out of it just fine. But the younger child was very seriously injured with a concussion and was in a coma for weeks. Well, during those weeks, the members of that church did as members of churches do. They rallied around their newest members. Evening meals were delivered each day. Transportation was provided. Cars were even loaned. And care was provided for one child so the parents could visit the other in the hospital more frequently. In addition, grandparents were shuttled back and forth from the airport. In short, the church stayed with that family throughout that entire period. Well, after a few weeks, the wonder of God's healing grace and the blessings of medical care, the child made a full recovery, returned home. That next Sunday, when that family got to church, they made a gift that was twice the amount of their annual pledge. They weren't conjoled into it. They didn't give it out of, out, out of anything other than just profound gratitude for the wonders and the gifts and the support, just an expression of deep joy. A votive offering is a spontaneous gift given as a part of a vow or a promise. 
It's an expression of gratitude. The other type of offering we find in Deuteronomy chapter 12 is the free will offering. It too is somewhat spontaneous. Like the votive offering, it's called forth by circumstances. It's an immediate response to a circumstance that touches you. It's a special offering for victims of disasters. You know, one of the, one of the most amazing parts of my job is every now and then somebody will come up to me very quietly and they'll say, you know, pastor, so-and-so seems to be hurting. And, and, if, and if I gave them money, they'd probably take offense. But if, I, but if I made a small gift to the discretionary fund, could you funnel that toward them in a way that could be helpful? It's a free will offering. Just a gift called forth from generosity. I have another story for you from Brian Bachnight. When he was serving in a church out in western Pennsylvania, they had a weekly healing service every Wednesday around 6 o'clock. And about 15 minutes before that service was to begin, a parent with two teenagers came into the building. They were part of a wandering group of homeless people that still wander through our land with nowhere to go. They had nothing. They had no food, no transportation, no home. They had no one else to contact. They only had the clothes on their back and those were tattered and dirty. They hadn't eaten for a day. Well, the, 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 the leader of the service said, uh, I, I can't help you right now because I have this service I need to go to, but if you'd be willing to wait in this room, I'll be back in about 45 minutes or so, and then we'll see how we can be helpful. As a part of the service, this person shared with a very small group, I think he said there were 14 people in attendance for that midweek service. Their circumstances were shared and someone grabbed an offering plate and, and put it right by the door. Well, by the end of the service, there was $85 in cash. Someone had even contributed a $50 bill. But that wasn't the end of it. Someone else piped up and said, oh, here's my credit card. Get them a room at the hotel so they can have a shower. And someone else said, well, uh, there'll be a hot meal delivered here in about a half an hour. And then a third person asked, what are their sizes? I'll get them some clothing. Well, there was enough money in the pastor's discretionary fund to purchase three bus tickets. You see, these wandering people had, had a hope that if they could just get to this other city, that, that, that they knew someone who would give them a job. No one planned to have a fundraiser that night. Three people suddenly appeared in need, and that became an opportunity for a free will offering. Three hurting people were helped with food, clothing, a hot shower, a warm bed, and transportation to their chosen destination. A free will offering. Well, Deuteronomy 12 is a beautiful passage. And this, for us, is God's house. 
Well, I sent you a pledge card through the mail and through our an electronic beans this week. And I hope you will use it. You'll get it back to us so that you too can bring your tithes and your offerings here to this place. But there will also be other opportunities. There will be moments when we have been blessed and out of that blessing we'd want to express our gratitude with a votive offering. And I hope that this church is always a magnet for hurting people. That those who are in desperate need would believe us when we say that we are followers of Christ and that we want to be helpful. Amen. Well, I do want to continue to express my gratitude for uh, the generosity that so many have expressed in, in supporting us. Most, there are three ways. Some go to our church's website and they follow the prompts for online giving while others have gone to their own bank and through a bill pay service, they have arranged to have their gifts sent directly to us, and that has been so helpful. Others write checks and mail them by, mail them in or drop them off when, when, when they're out and about. However you choose to give, I want you to know that your gifts matter and that we will use them to the best of our ability to advance God's kingdom. So thank you. Well, it's not our custom to share our joys and concerns during this uh, weekend worship video for privacy's sake, but I do have one story that I just, I just have to tell you. If you listened to last week's uh, video, you might remember there was a time in that video where I talked about one of our members, Phyllis Allen. And uh, I report to you today that Phyllis did die and uh, her service will be this coming week. But what I didn't know is that uh, her family brought the laptop to her bedside in hospice house. And Phyllis watched this video she was comforted by familiar voices. She recognized the familiar sanctuary. And she heard the kind things that were said about her. And her family said her eyes lit up. Because of this work, we gave a great, great saint a warm, affirmation, even in the close of her earthly journey. So I rejoice with you in this ministry. Now I would uh, invite Jameson to come and lead us in our morning prayers. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the many blessings that you've blessed each and every one of us with, for this time to gather here in your presence, for the sun shining through the windows, for our loved ones and those for whom we care, for the beautiful works of creation in this wonderful fall season of changing colors and changing temperatures. We thank you. And on this Sunday, we, this weekend, we Consider the ways that we can give back just a small portion of all that you have given to us. We know that you're working in the lives of this town, of this congregation, in the ministries and the works of these people, and we pray that you would guide us in supporting those ministries and giving back to you. But also on this All Saints Sunday, we think of those many wonderful people that have come before and shown us that example, the people like Kathy's parents, like Phyllis and so many others that we cannot name here today. We lift them up to you and pray that you would receive those saints and that we would always remember the example they set, the example of, of compassion and generosity, 
of forgiveness and love, allowing your light to shine through them and that we might do the same. Today we lift up those who are in times of difficulty, those who are facing anxiety and illness, those facing a long journey ahead or times of transition, those in feeling the effects of fear and violence here and around the world. And we pray that you would move in those situations, place your hand of, of healing, of peace, of comfort, of calm, of forgiveness. Whatever is needed, we pray that you would work in those situations and that you would allow us to be your eyes and ears, your hands and feet in this world. Giving generously of our finances, of our time, of our energy, and of ourselves. And if we can do that, we know that you will work miracles and do wonderful things. And all this we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, and as we come to our time of announcements, I have something. Um, our young people in our Sunday school classes have yet another service Sunday coming up. Those have, for the most part, been on the second Sunday of the month. And this month, in the month of November, our second Sunday service Sunday is sorting and folding clothes for cradles to crayons. If you would like to support this, whether you are young or less young, you may do so if you have any clothes or books that you would like to donate, um, specifically for children up through teenage years. Uh, you can drop those off at the church. We will be sorting those next Sunday on the second Sunday of November. If you're a young person and would like to come support this ministry, it's a wonderful day, a wonderful activity that uh, can be of great help for those in need, very close, very nearby here in Wilmington. Thank you very much. I have two things to share by way of announcement. The first is that uh, on, on Wednesday, November the 16th, will be our church's charge conference. That will be uh, here in the, in, in the coffee room and Reverend Ann Robertson from the uh, United Methodist Church in Winchester will be with us to preside, and I uh, hope you'll come. All members of the church are welcome to come and learn about our ministries and about our work. And secondly, I would, um, I'd like, as I said earlier in my sermon, we've sent out our, our, our pledge cards, our estimate of giving cards, and uh, I hope that you would get that and return that back to the church by the 21st of November so we can complete our our financial plans for the year to come. Your generosity is uh, so, so important for the work that we do together. So uh, I thank you for that. Well, the coming Sunday will be the first Sunday of the month and we will observe Holy Communion and All Saints Day. Uh, if you're not comfortable attending in person yet, but would like to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion, I would be more than happy to make arrangements to share that with you in a way that's uh, safe or at least safer. So if you'd reach out and let me know, um, I would be very, very pleased to come and uh, share the sacrament with you. Now I invite us as we close our time together to, uh, to receive a final blessing. And now may that peace of God that passes all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus. And may the blessing of the one who creates, who redeems, and who sustains be with you now and always. Amen. <laughs>